Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms. And today I wanna to talk about moving trailers with your tractor. And I don't necessarily mean trailers that are made for a tractor, but I've got three different trailers that I use for different purposes to pull behind my truck. And for different reasons, you might wanna move those with your tractor. Sometimes I'm using it to drive around the property and load some wood up on it or something like that or sometimes I'm just moving it to mow. But I find myself wanting to move trailers with a tractor fairly often. I've also got a log splitter that has the same receiver hitch that I like to move with the tractor. So I wanna compare three different options that I have available to me. I'm gonna set each of those options up, move a trailer with them, talk about what I like about doing it that way and what I don't like about doing it that way. And then I'm gonna talk about a couple of other options that I don't have set up today, but I've considered. So if you're interested in the best way or my opinion of the best way to move a trailer with a tractor, stick around. So this may not be the answer anyone wants to hear, but the truth is most things like this, there's not a best way. There is the best way for a certain situation. And each of the ways I'm gonna show might be the best way to do it in a certain situation. I'm gonna start by talking about the cheapest and the easiest way. So this is an inexpensive attachment that has one job and that's to go on a pallet fork and move a trailer. So you can slide this over the fork, tighten this handle right here, and it's locked down. Now I don't like trusting that lockdown. I use a chain. Now the, when I've used this before, I have my artillion pallet forks on and those are shorter. So I was able to loop it around the frame and go straight onto the other side. And then I also had the option that that artillion frame has chain slots. So I could have just stretched this back, dropped it into the slot and secured it that way. But since this is a longer fork and this frame doesn't have those slots, I'm gonna loop it through here, bring it back until it's almost tight, and then hook the chain back through itself. This is gonna make sure that if my trailer's heavy or hits a bump, that this isn't gonna come loose right here and pop off and lose my trailer while I'm moving. So that's never a good thing. The first thing I think I'll do with this is get the trailer and bring it up here and demonstrate all the other parts up here because all my tractor attachments are up here. I don't guess I'm going anywhere till I put the receiver in. Any of these methods I'm talking about today, they just get you a spot to put a receiver. And then you can do whatever you want from there. It doesn't necessarily have to be moving a trailer. I've got a receiver that you can slide in the same way and then it's got a chain hook on the end. You know, or anything else that you have that goes in a receiver can be used with the, any of these attachments.
benefits to this system if you already have a pallet fork frame it's not that expensive i think i might have spent like 30 dollars on that another 30 on the safety chains so depending on where you get it and if you already have some chain you know you're going to spend a little bit of money but it's not bad um negatives are it puts strain on one fork but not the other one so if you were doing this all the time with a heavy trailer you could end up bending one fork and if one fork's lower than the other it's awkward to pick up a uh, load with the pallet forks um, these are the heaviest built pallet forks i have so that's why i use this frame my heavier forks were already on the heavier frame where i have my lighter forks on the lighter artillion frame so another thing is with this it's you get great visibility to pick up the trailer and see as you're pulling into it so that's definitely a plus and with it being on the loader you can lift it a lot higher than you can if it's on the three-point hitch so that extra lift ability allowed me to not even raise the jack because i could just lift the trailer up far enough that the jack isn't going to hit and where i just drove this is really bumpy so if that was going to be a problem it would have been on that trip so you do have to be careful when you lift that too high that the bottom doesn't bottom out but it's nice if you're moving this trailer mowing and then moving it back to not have to crank your jack handle around i find it to be more convenient to pull a trailer on the back of the tractor so you're just driving straight forward and then when you go to back up with the trailer it's something you're used to because we all who have a trailer we're all used to backing a trailer so it's really not that hard it's just a different learning curve of how to maneuver a trailer from the front i also like that if you already have pallet forks on it's not time consuming to put this on yeah slides on and hook the chains up takes about a minute or two so let's go ahead and get this off and move to the next method of of moving trailers i move freight and a little bit of everything with these pallet forks pretty much every day i've had three instances to use the pallet forks just today so i really ha like having the more than one set because this is my heavy setup it's got the tall backrest the frame's heavy the forks are heavy but it's more stable probably with the longer forks it's more stable on a larger load but then if i have to lift something that's really heavy especially if it's compact then i can use the artillion setup with the shorter forks and get that extra 100 pounds of lift capacity I've got some more videos coming up on expanding and improving this racking system to hold more of my attachments so that I don't have scenarios like this where I had to set those pallet forks on the ground. Um, I even want to extend it out so I can get my three-point attachments off the ground. I've already got several videos that show how to take this artillion grapple apart, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. But I will just say that it's not difficult or time consuming to put this setup on or to take it off of the loader. I think this is going to be an easy one to get off the ground. I, I just, you know, it was a big step forward getting everything um, under the roof and protected from the elements. And the next step is to get everything off the ground because right now there might be a situation for instance if i wanted my tiller 
now the pallet fork frames in the way so I want to get it as organized as I can So the second way that I like to do it is to put my receiver directly into my artillion pallet frame. If you're already using the artillion modular system, I've listed off a bunch of the reasons I like this system. Another one is you don't have to buy anything to move a trailer with it. So for the last setup, I had to buy the chains and I had to buy that attachment that goes on the end of the forks. Well, if you use the artillion forks, you don't have to buy that. Um, another advantage to this, compared to what I just saw, showed you, is that you're not putting strain on your forks. You're putting the weight closer to the tractor. Therefore, if you're lifting a very heavy trailer, it's going to be easier to lift with the receiver right here in the pallet fork frame. Now let's move that trailer and see if there's any other pros and cons. works just fine. There's only one negative to using this receiver in the artillion frame and that is visibility. When you come up to a trailer that's at this height you can't see the receiver when the when you get the ball lined up. So I find that I have to get it where I think it's right and then put it in neutral, put the brake on, lift up out of my seat and then I can see that it's lined up and pick it up. So not a big deal, but as I mentioned a minute ago, the trade-off for that is, let's say I had this full of logs that were gonna get cut into firewood, I've got more lifting capacity this way. And so that's kind of a comparison between those two methods of pulling it from the front, which have the same pros and cons outside of that, and you could easily compare these two methods to putting a ball right on the top of your bucket or you know anything else that you have on the front of the tractor. I prefer generally not to drill a big two inch diameter hole in front of my bucket, but I, I know people do that and, or you could weld a plate on to the top of the bucket that has your ball on it. But I kind of like having the receiver so that you could put something else in there. But that's just my preference. Now. Let's try moving a trailer from the three-point. All right, well, this is the first time taking this Bommelite stump grinder off of the tractor since I got it. Now, there's a couple reasons for that. Number one is I plan to do a lot of stump grinding, and I've already done three, but I haven't had any use for it lately, but I'm also leaving it on for two other reasons. Number one, it makes a good ballast because it weighs 940 pounds and sticks out six feet off the back of the tractor. So if I'm moving a log with the grapple, that's a good choice for on the back, although it does cut down your turning radius. Um, and then the second reason is that it's 940 pounds, and it's the only attachment that I have that is not quick hitch compatible. And I have an idea for how I'm gonna store this and move it, but I don't have that set up yet. So right now, I'm gonna try to set it on a pallet right here, and then use ratchet straps to hold it on the pallet and move it that way. But I'm not just taking it off now so that I can demonstrate moving a trailer. I also have my new seven foot landscape rake over here and I'm excited to try that out and I've got a couple cleanup projects I'm gonna do in the next video. So this needed to come off anyway.
right, well, I got the stump grinder off. Wasn't too bad. I've got it strapped down to this pallet, so now I can move it under the shed, keep it out of the rain. And I went ahead and put the quick hitch on. And right here in front of me is my heavy hitch weight bar. Um, it's kind of a dual purpose item because it can serve almost like a ballast box and then it's got a receiver on it. So we'll go ahead and set that in the quick hitch. All right, so I've already got the receiver in it, so it's ready to pick up the trailer. So it's also got this bar right here that you can hang suitcase weights on, but I think it's only rated for the smaller weights, which are about 42 pounds a piece. So you can only put, my memory's not 100% on this, but I'm thinking you can only put like 300 pounds back here. So to me, that's not really enough ballast for most of the stuff I do, but it does give you that option. And it lets you pull the trailer from the most comfortable position, which is pulling it behind the tractor. So let's go ahead and hook up to the trailer and then talk about the pros and cons of using this way. All right, so even though I just barely missed it that time on getting it lined up and I had to bump it on by hand, um, you've got good visibility, and most of the time you should be able to hit that on the first try. But like I said a minute ago, one advantage is it's going to pull like you're used to a trailer pulling. Another advantage is it's got more lift capacity on the three-point than you do on the front-end loader for most tractors. So if you've got that loaded down with logs, that's gonna be a good way to do it. And now in that scenario, you could put your, the grapple on the front, drive your trailer out to where your trees are, set the trailer down, go pick up your logs, set them on the trailer, hook back up, and go. So that gives you the option to have a front end attachment, but it takes away the ability to have a rear implement. So I think it's best to have the ability to pull your trailer from the front or the rear. That way you have some versatility. One negative to pulling it from behind is you have less lift height, which most of the time you don't need to lift it very high, but I find it to be a little bit helpful. So let's say I wanted to take and load this up with firewood and take it a mile down the road and I didn't want to switch it to the truck. I could do that with the tractor with it on the three point. I couldn't hook it up to the front very well and take it down the road to a neighbor's house. So this is probably the best way but it's not always going to be the most convenient way. So all of that is theory. What have I actually done the most when I needed to move a trailer? I've used the Artillion pallet fork frame with the receiver in it more than anything else, especially for something like just moving the wood splitter across the yard or something small like that. I find that to be the most convenient thing to do because I've always got some kind of an implement on the back of the tractor for ballast. You could also have the option to take whatever you use for ballast, whether that's a ballast box, a box blade, whatever you like to keep on the back as your ballast, you could put a ball on that. But again, most of the time, I prefer not to modify my attachments in that way, you know, drilling a hole in it or welding a plate on the top. I prefer to use one of these methods that's designed for moving a trailer. But 
Anyway, I hope that you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. In a minute, you'll see links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.